Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Hamish and today we've got an exciting one because I have Steven Spicer from Spicer Capital who is going to be coming on my channel and doing a video with me. If you don't know what Spicer Capital is or who Steven is, uh, he also has a YouTube channel where he talks about investing topics and uh, how to invest as well as just talking about different investments and things that are happening in the markets. And essentially me and him, we've been in contact for a little while now, so we thought that we'd do a couple of videos together. So today in this video, I'm going to be interviewing Steven and talking about his investing philosophy and that sort of thing. And he is also going to be having a video come out on his channel where he is going to be interviewing me and talking about my background and what kind of investing style I use. So you definitely wanna go check out his channel after this video, but for now, let's jump into it. All right, so Stephen, can you just start off by giving us a brief introduction about your background in finance and how you ended up on YouTube? Yeah, absolutely, Amish, and, and thank you so much for having me here on your channel and for coming on to my channel. Uh, I sincerely appreciate and respect your analysis and discipline when it comes to stock investing. Uh, as for my background between stocks and real estate, I've, I've been investing for a long time. Uh, I love seeing my money make more money as efficiently as possible. Uh, I, I actually had an, an industry job for a little more than five years where I advised others on their investments. Uh, but all during high school, college, and, and during that career, I was researching and trying to find the best ways to protect and grow my own assets. I had actually lost quite a bit in 2008 just staying the course, as the conventional wisdom suggests. Uh, and I, I knew that there had to be a better way. So long story short, I found it, at least something that works for me. But in my career, I quickly realized that I wouldn't be able to deviate too far from the cookie cutter solutions that were offered by my company. So I left, I went out on my own. I managed a small fund, set up like a hedge fund for a year while I, I buried myself in research. Uh, again, I was, I was still just trying to find the best way to do this. Uh, and uh, during that year, I kept finding more and more what I'll call flaws in that conventional investment wisdom. And eventually it just, it just got to me. I, I had to do something more than just manage this small private fund my real impact potential there was was pretty pretty limited to the few people whose money I was managing. So I began exploring the best ways to get my message out there uh, to other concerned investors, other people who, who cared and wanted to listen. Uh, I even, I, I wrote a, a mini book um, that, I think I have it, yeah. I have a bunch of them right there. But uh, I wrote a mini book, it's called Stop Investing, I Can Tell You, and it outlines some of my concerns and, and then some potential solutions that it's actually gonna be in stores soon. I think some stores have it uh, now. I'm not sure about over there in Australia though, I'll have to uh, talk to my publisher anyway. Uh, but I realized that if I really wanted to reach people and, and to help people, I'd have to, to really put myself out there and uh, YouTube just seemed like the best way to do that a public forum where people could see the the real me and then make an honest assessment of whether or not they thought that i could help them so here i am yeah that's actually so true i love youtube and its ability for me to be able to help people on a massive scale i can just make a video and then share it and thousands of people can watch it at the same time or whenever they have free time and i really really like that uh, about YouTube. Now, the second question we had for you was, most of your videos sort of revolve around this idea of finding an opportunity in a business. And I just wanted to talk about, I want you to explain to us uh, what you look for in an investment, what kind of criteria do you use in order to assess the businesses that you're going to be investing in? Yeah, my, my favorite video that I put together each month is my top stock pick video. And that seems to be uh, the favorites of my viewers as well. Those are some of my most popular videos, but uh, those picks are based around my unique valuation approach. Uh, while most people are investing in, in the same large US companies as everyone else, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find those rare opportunities out there, the hidden gems 
of the investment world. Uh, they have to at least meet these uh, three broad criteria. Uh, one, the stock needs to have significant asymmetric upside. Ideally, it's 100% based on undervaluation alone, uh, but I'll never invest in one if it has less than 50% from that perspective. Uh, two, it needs to have a, a limited downside. And this is the part of the equation that, that I think a lot of people overlook. Uh, I need to be able to identify a reason that should the market crash, for example, this stock will fall by, by less than everything else. And three, and this is probably the biggest thing that most investors ignore, that value investors ignore. It's the reason that a lot of people get stuck, a lot of new investors and uh, professional investors get stuck in the so-called value traps and falling knives. Uh, the company that I, I'm going to invest in needs to have some sort of catalyst uh, because there is some reason that the market is suppressing its valuation. There needs to be some potential event uh, that could change that, that could open the market's eyes as to the actual fair value. And if I can identify, uh, if, I, if, I, if I can't identify one or more of those potential catalysts, then I won't invest. So that's it. Those are the key things for me that I'm looking for every time. A significant upside, a limited downside, and a potential catalyst or two. Right. Okay. So then what kind of process do you undergo um, when you're assessing these criteria. So going a little bit deeper into each of these criteria, how do you analyze them and how do you decide that a stock has ticked all your boxes? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. There's, there's a lot to that question uh, as each company is a little different. So for the upside, I try to assess a stock in as many ways as makes sense uh, because I want to be sure that my hypothesis, the, the reason I'm investing specifically for its upside potential here, rings true even at its lowest assessment of fair value. So I'm often calculating a conservative discounted cash flow, which I know you do a lot. I'm summing the parts uh, when it's relevant. I'm almost always running a competitive analysis. So if I can find comparable companies, then I'll, well, if I can't find them, then I won't invest in the company. I need something to compare it to. And then I, I might run calculations based on a revenue or EBITDA or some other valuation multiple if there have been some acquisitions or other similar precedents in the industry in the past. But like I said, I'm doing as many of those as make sense for the company in question before I can feel comfortable and confident in its true potential upside. The downside calculation can, it can be a little bit more straightforward. Uh, it might come from a large cash position. The company could be trading below its tangible book value. Uh, it could come from a, a relatively easily supported dividend that based on the yield uh, relative to the industry could prop up its price. Just something along those lines where I could quantify a valuation that could set a floor for me that I can be pretty confident that it's not going to fall too far below that level. Uh, and then finally, the, the catalyst part of the analysis is probably the most subjective and is something that's become easier to understand and identify as I've gained more experience over the years. I'm just looking for something specific that could happen that the market seems to be discounting or ignoring. Uh, that could include a potential acquisition, a potential dividend announcement, large shareholder movements. Uh, a lot of times it's just an event that could bring with a positive press, causing other investors to notice how undervalued the company is. One of the biggest mistakes that I personally see a lot of beginners make is that they don't worry about the price. And I want to ask you, do you think that the price you pay for a stock matters or is it does it not matter if there's a really, really great business? It doesn't matter what price you pay, you're going to make a really good profit on that investment. So what, what is your opinion on price? Does it matter and how important is it? And how do you assess the price um, when you're analyzing businesses? Oh, absolutely. I think that's a huge mistake that most investors make. In fact, I take a little further. I, I think a lot of YouTubers who are making investment videos make this mistake as well. And I get it. It's easy to do, but it's also extremely dangerous. 
so many people will talk about how good a company is and thus suggest that that means it's a good investment. But that's just half of the equation. You can't do that. If the, if the market has already priced all of that in, all of that assessment of fair value, if that's already priced in or more, then surely there are better investments out there. There are better places to put your money than an overvalued good company. Uh, but yeah, this comes back to my first criteria. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Exactly what you're talking about there. I'm looking for a 100% upside when I compare what you would currently have to pay for the company in question to what I believe it's actually worth. I want there to be 100% potential upside. And if, if you don't look at both sides, I just, I don't think you can be successful long term. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one mistake that I personally see beginners make, but I'm wondering if you have another mistake that you also see beginners make that you could make them aware of right now and something that they can correct and improve on their investing style. Well, the one you mentioned is a good one. Uh, one that people really need to understand and pay attention to, but it's something that I see all the time. One of my biggest fears when creating this content, specifically those top stock pick videos, is that people will blindly follow my ideas. And I think that's dangerous. I know it's dangerous. The reason I do those videos is to be able to walk you through my process, to give you small doses of my actual analysis so that maybe you can pick up a thing or two each time that you can implement in your own research and analysis process. But if you don't fully understand the ins and outs of the investments that you're making, you can quickly get into trouble when just blindly following what someone else says. For example, the fundamentals may change the day after I release a video, and I may change my opinion. I may sell out of my position, that, that doesn't mean that my analysis was wrong. Something fundamental changed, and that changed my investment thesis. But if the viewer never fully understood all the fundamentals or, or why they're invested the way that they are, it's likely that as stocks or markets move, counter to what was expected, perhaps, that they react emotionally, which is dangerous when investing. Investors who are just starting out, need to spend some time learning to analyze stocks. They need to develop and understand their own personal investment strategies. They can definitely learn from your style, and I, I think they can learn from my style, and they need to keep learning as much as they can until they've developed something that works for them. Now, Hamish, I think that was the last question that, that you were going to ask. So uh, I just wanted to take a second to thank you for having me on your channel. Uh, I have an immense respect for uh, you and your approach. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it and, and the content that you're putting out there. Uh, and I want to wish you and, and all your viewers all the best. Take care. I hope you guys enjoyed me interviewing Steven Spicer. I think it's always great to hear different perspectives about investing and sort of expand your knowledge about the different investing philosophies out there. If you're interested, go over to Spicer Capital's channel and go check out the video where I'm being interviewed by Steven. And of course, if you are interested in investing, if you're serious about investing there and you want to subscribe to a channel that has really, really high value and high quality content, then I recommend you go over to Spicer Capital, go over to Steven's channel and subscribe to him. I personally have learned a ton from watching his videos. His videos are really, really great. They're very concise and you learn a lot in the five or 10 minute videos that he produces. So if that's something that you're interested in and you're serious about investing, definitely go over and subscribe. I'll leave links to everything down in the description below. But I hope you guys had a great day and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.